What's good? We back. It's the Boxing Clinic and more. Y'all know what it is. Your boy CJ Goodfella. Uh, don't forget to check the links in the description. Join the Facebook um, page. You know, and if you want to get in touch with me, um, you know, quickly, that's the quickest way to hit the inbox there to get in touch with me. And I've seen a lot of people put their um, pound for pound lists up. And, you know, a lot of people get it confused with their favorite fighter list. You know, who, you, who they like most. And people say, well, accomplishments and and stuff of that nature, and I'm a, I'm a uh, reverse the roles. I'm gonna pick holes in everybody on his pictures, um, pound for pound bid. And a lot of people are not gonna like it, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's how I play devil advocate. And you, I see a lot of people trying to put Jorge Linares. Let's start up him. That's him in the top left hand corner. I, you know, and they trying to put him in the pound for pound list. And I'm like, who the fuck is he beating? Please, somebody tell me. I mean, he beat Anthony Carrillo twice. He beat Luke Campbell, who ain't did nothing on the pro level. Um, and other than that, every big fight he didn't lost. He didn't lost versus uh, Antonio DeMarco. I mean, he got knocked out twice by Sergio Thompson. Got knocked out by Antonio DeMarco. Somebody else. Uh, I can't remember who the other guy that knocked him out. But, you know, the first thing that people tend to forget about the pound for pound list is a simple fact. It's about who you beat. What, what, the, what legit fighter has you be, have, have you beaten? And a lot of these guys ain't being no legit fighter or beat a, a competition because it ain't a lot of A fighters walking around in boxing. So we go down the list, A minus, A, B minus, I mean B plus, B minus fighters, you know, like that. And people say, well, he dominated his division. Okay, that's good to know. But if his division is lackluster and weak, I mean, how can you give him credit for a dominated division? That sucks. You know, if you were, if you were a fighter, you know, let's say hypothetically, you seen this A fighter amongst a bunch of C fighters. I mean, you a giant. You are you the tallest midget amongst other midgets. That that don't mean nothing, because when you go pound for pound, you step outside. You know, you step out to the pound for pound list. I mean, you just a midget amongst giants now. So that's the number one thing that matters in the pound for pound list is who you have you beaten. What elite competition have you beaten? The Jorge Linares is beating no elite competition. None. He beat Lomachenko, yes, he deserves to be in there. He beat Mikey Garcia, yes, he he got he got a chance to be top three, top five if he does that. Just keeping the trio, you go to Alexander Usyk. Now, a lot of people was pushing Alexander Usyk to be pound for pound, and I don't see it. You know, skill wise, I don't see it. This dude is amateurish, but he did unify. Uh, he got two belts, and you know, uh, that's good for him. You know, in the grand scheme of things, that's very good for him. Um, but nobody really cares about Cruiserweight. And it's a lot of competition. I've been pumping and pushing that Cruiserweight tournament. But at the end of the day, when you're talking about pound for pound, none, none, none of the guys he beat is pound for pound. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, he don't have no crossover appeal. How can you be on the pound for pound list and nobody know who the fuck you is? You feel me? Nobody know who Alexander Lusik is other than hardcore and purest boxing fans. You know, and I'm just keeping it real. He's a good fighter, but he's very amateurish with 13 fights. But yet again, you guys turn around and tell me that uh, a guy like Jamal Charlo don't deserve a shot, don't deserve this, don't deserve that. That guy got 13 fights. That What do you deserve? He ain't beat nobody that, 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 that fans universally know. He didn't beat nobody in the top 10 of pound for pound or the top 50, you know? You know, popularity counts for the pound for pound list, and he's just in a division that's dead. You know, no, I'm not trying to uh, really kill the guy, but at the end of the day, he was struggling with Michael Hunter in the first half of that fight. And Michael Hunter had like a two, three year layoff or something like that. I'm just saying, he's very amateur as well. Kovalev. Kovalev have not beat any elite talent in this whole time at light heavyweight. It ain't, it, I mean, you can blame Madonna Stevenson if you want to, but who did he beat? He struggled with that Isaac Chumbamba guy. I can't even pronounce his name. He he beat an old Bernard Hopkins. That's it. And when he had a guy that stepped up after a long layoff and, and, and Andre Ward, he lost twice. He lost twice. Let's keep it real. What pound for pound elite talent, what A fighter has Kovalev beat? What B plus fighter has Kovalev beat? He beat a grandpa Bernard Hopkins was his claim to fame. I ain't got to spend long on that. Who said, well, you know, Donna Stevenson. Hey, that's a Donna Stevenson. That's his fault. The fight didn't happen. That's his fault. You know, I ain't got nothing to say about that. You go to Canelo Alvarez. 
I think he has the best chance at saying he's number one pound for pound because he has it all, in my opinion. You know, um, I think, you know, he's beat top fighters. He beat Lara. He beat Trout. Even though he got a lot of watered-down victories versus junior welterweights and welterweights, that is true. But he's pulling the most numbers. And when you're talking about pound for pound, popularity does matter. He pulled the most numbers, you know. He, fight the, he fought Triple G like you guys wanted him to, to a draw. And he got a chance to right his wrongs there. He beat Trout. He beat Laura. I mean, he beat Chavez Jr. and did a million with that, even though I don't really count that. But, you know, a lot of people say he got a lot of gifts. He got a lot of robberies, you know, in his favor. And I feel him on that. It, it is something to be desired right now for Canelo Alvarez. And beating Triple G and dominate the middleweight division says a lot. But like I said, there is no person that's the defecto king of the pound for pound. There's no Roy Jones. There's no Mayweather. There's no Pacquiao. None of these guys are that yet. They're in the developmental stages of being that. The whole pound for pound list. You know? And it's a transition mode. And when you're talking about boxing, Canelo Alvarez is the face of boxing right now. We're talking about pulling numbers. People identifying with Canelo Alvarez. He might not take a show on the road to the East Coast, North or, or South, or like that. But right now, when people say boxing, he's the most popular boxer out there that's still active. You're talking about Vasyl Machenko. I mean, I could poke holes in him all day, and I got a lot of love for him. And skill in the eye test is, is one part of the pound-for-pound pound list as well. Criteria, in my opinion, and, and he passes that with flying colors, but who has the fuck has he beat? Nicholas Walters took a year off because he didn't like the offer they was giving him to force his face to Machenko until he needed the money. You feel me? He, he last year he didn't be anybody in relevance, and people giving him the pound the uh, fighter of the year. Who is uh, Jason Sosa? Got to have like five amateur fights. Then he dips and, and fights uh, Oscar Valdez left over at one twenty six. Then he fights a super battle weight in Rigondeaux. I mean, I'm not impressed. And you know the best win is Gary Russell, but he did lose to Orlando Salido. You feel me? And at the end of the day, he ain't got no marquee victories as well. That's just another uh, media hype job right now. You know, he, he, I mean, when he moves up and fights Lenars and beat Mikey Garcia, then we could talk about, you know, him being a real pound-for-pound pound fighter. But he's on my list. But I'm just playing devil's advocate here for people to understand. I'm poking holes in everybody. Keith Thurman, he ain't been active. To be a pound-for-pound pound star, you got to fight, you know, especially when you ain't earned the right to be a Mayweather Pacquiao. You got to fight more than one time a year. And he ain't been active. And really, he ain't really fought no, 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 his equal or his pupil, his peer neither. Earl Spence is his real claim to fame. And both of Earl Spence, him and Earl Spence, them fighting each other, you know, in one of the, the most talented divisions, tells you who's the best right there and then goes on to face Terrence Crawford, hopefully. But Keith Thurman, he ain't been active. He ain't been active. And, um, Sean Porter, he's a B fighter. Danny Garcia at 147. I don't know. I guess he's a B fighter as well. Um, but you know, he got to be more active and get his show on the road and Earl Spence will be his telltale. Mikey Garcia beating Adrian Broner, who's been beat two times before. Don't make you a pound for pound fighting fighter beating D'Artinian, Zane D'Artinian. Don't make you a pound for pound fighter. You know, I don't know if people are going off the eye test and stuff of that nature, but him being limping and becoming a four time, uh, champion two, four different weight classes. That's good. But tell me what he do versus Lomachenko and what he does versus Jorge Linares and what he does versus the eventual winner of the WC tournament and Regis Progress, Francis Bartholomew, Josh Taylor eventually. I mean, the list can go on. The winner between Terry Flanagan and Maurice Hooker. Tell me what he do versus elite competition, not just picking and choosing his fights right now. And what he does versus Lomachenko, what he does versus Linares, what he does versus the winner of that, that WC tournament, it, it's going to be a telltale tell off of him. But right now, he ain't got the most booming names on, on his on his resume as well. You know, people just going off the eye test. And Gennady Golovkin, he ain't be no future Hall of Famers. He ain't be no future Hall of Famers yet. 36 years old. He ain't be shit. All them fighters he fought up to Kell Brook, bums. Not really good. He's one of the most fabricated resumes in, in boxing, most padded resumes in boxing. He's a media darling. And I ain't got mince words on that. I've been saying that, so I ain't got to harp on him. You know where I stand. stand. And for him to step up versus Kell Brook, that's good. His biggest fight and his most competition fight up to that point was Kell Brook. 
He most people believe Danny Jacobs beat him. He barely about be eased past Danny Jacobs, who has never been a real world champion. Regular WBA is not a real world championship belt. And then he finally steps up versus biggest fall with Kendall Alvarez, promised to knock out fall short. Come on. Terrence Crawford. His best his best uh his best win is versus Victor Postal. Victor Postal, I mean, he ain't I mean he alright, but that ain't that ain't a pound for pound king's best number one, is it? You know, that's not even the best victory on this list. And people said we well, unified the division. Well, the division he unified was weak. Let's keep it real. Thirty five was weak, been weak for years. Forty was weak when he got there. You know, Derry John, Thomas Delorme, Hank Lundy, um, um, you know, John Molina, Felix Diaz is, is a good win. Um, you know. In Dongo, you can keep going on and on. But where's the marquee win at? Where where's the fight that we can say was 50-50? Now some people were saying the postal fight was 50-50 and they was crazy. But it's work to be done for Terrence Crawford. Even though he is my number one. But like I told you guys, my real number one is vacant. There's no guy that, that really has grabbed the number one spot. It's just been given to him. You know, you look at a guy like Earl Spence Jr. His biggest win was Kell Brook. He beat Peterson. And basically his claim to fame for most of his fans is because it's because he's because he's feared. You know, and you know, fear don't make you pound for pound because all it takes is one guy to step up and show chinks in your armor. You know, that's all it takes. It takes one guy to show that uh, you're not invincible and crack that code and then what? So you can't sell it on fear. You can't sell it on, oh, he's the Paul Williams of his division. People don't want to fight him. You can't sell that on that. He still got work to be done. And everybody on his work and on his list got work to be done. To me, this pound for pound list is, is very, very watered down because boxing is in a transition mode. It's a transition from Pacquiao and Mayweather area and them stagnating, sta making the air, making you know division stagnant, making people wait for them to come up or come down and make case weights with them and not fighting the best in their division, waiting on them. And now that, that roadblock is, is almost gone, now you got guys that's being compet more competitive, and now you got them mixing up in the ring. And this was me just playing devil's advocate and, and giving you guys reason why guys in the, in the pound for pound list, you know, giving, to, giving you the other side, what the other people were saying, the truth and facts based on that. But it's TBC. 